The suffragettes were a group of women who were campaigning for the vote. The campaign had been going on for a while, but it became much more energetic and more militant in this period. So we're talking about roughly the 1890s up to uh, the end of the First World War. Some of the main characters you may have heard of are uh, the Pankhurst, so Emmeline, who is known as Mrs. Pankhurst, and her daughters Sylvia and Christabel. There was also Flora Drummond, who we see in the films, who was known as the General. She dressed in a uniform and was rather, you know, forthright. The way the campaign of the suffragettes was organised, they would go out and make more noise. This is what Emmeline Pankhurst had asked them to do. This was the strategy. So anywhere where three or more people would gather together, somebody would pop up and go, votes for women. As soon as cinema begins to happen, and we have to remember that by this time, maybe 20 million people are going to the cinema every week. Um, this became a very good way of being visible same as getting into newspaper photographs or pictures, illustrations. Getting in front of the cameras was really a key thing. So the suffragettes would invite the newsreel cameramen, who might not otherwise be sympathetic, and they would invite them to occupy the best positions, say, at a big demonstration, so that they were seen in a good light. So you would get um, a lovely sweeping shot of the huge numbers of people attending a demonstration so you could see that this was a very popularly supported thing. The favourite one of mine is from a film called Mass Meeting of Suffragettes. There they are in Trafalgar Square and they have this fantastic posters where they've gone and petitioned all over the country and there is a poster from each of the towns, so it will say 3,976 men in Smethwick say they support votes for women. And this is a very strong message because it means that this is not a battle of the sexes, this is about power and Parliament not giving the vote to ordinary people. There's one incident that's captured on camera, really unusual, very unusual to capture a real event in front of the cameras at this time. Uh, a tragic event, which is Emily Davison um, being hit by a horse on Derby Day in 1913. The reason she was there was the strategy of the suffragettes again to be seen in front of the camera. So she stood on a corner knowing the cameras were there and she went out and stood in front of the horses as they came round the bend. And we see this in the film. She's struck, we see this happen. But because she doesn't die until three days after this event, the neutral cameramen think, oh, it's just some sort of accident. Uh, they barely see it and they just carry on filming the event. But then this becomes hugely important. She dies, it's news everywhere, and it is shown again and again and again and again. It tells us nothing about whether or not she intended to commit suicide. We don't know, we may never know. There are two ways that suffragettes are shown in cinema. There's one kind of negative version and there's one positive version. And both of them appear in, in one film. It's a lovely film called Milling the Militants. You get the negative point, the kind of ridiculing of the suffragettes. They're always shown as these sort of big battle axes with you know, big hats and they're all a bit kind of brutish and they're ridiculed. So we get this larger lady, shall we say, um, and her, who's left her husband at home with the kids while she goes out campaigning for votes for women. And he's dreaming, this dream about getting his own back on his wife. And there's a fantastic scene where they're shown there's various punishments for having, you know, shouting out in front of sort of MPs and what have you, where they are forced into wearing trousers and they have to walk down the street in the sort of shame of having, wearing trousers. It's very funny. And then the sort of positive side is that actually he then wakes up 
when she arrives back and she throws a bucket of water in his face. So she wins in the end. You know, these, these are not victims. These are young, happening, feisty women who are getting on with their lives and doing what they want. The younger ones um, don't do what their parents tell them. So you get characters like the Tilly Girls. So they're in a series from about 1912 and they're a comedy duo. They're always being told to behave themselves and this they refuse to do. So as soon as the adults are not looking, they behave appallingly. They, you know, steal all the food and they invite, you know, young boys round and cause all sorts of mayhem. And later on, they marry people for money and then leave them with the babies and go out and play golf. It's, it's excellent, really. They're a very cheery, um, feisty bunch. This is not a miserable story, it's a very positive story. So the war breaks out in 1914 and straight away uh, the suffragettes put the whole campaign on hold and that they mobilise, it says, their brains and bravery in support of the war effort. So they will organise hospitals at the front to treat the wounded, they work in munitions factories, they do all kinds of things. You know, one thing they do very cleverly with the films is to make sure their name is up there. So when you see this fantastic film of the Scottish women's hospitals, there is a sign up there that says that this is organised by the National Union of Women's Suffrage Societies. They make sure that during the course of the war, although they're not campaigning in a kind of militant way, they're still there and look at how beautifully they're organising everything. And this is why they are responsible and this is why they deserve the vote when the war is over. In 1918, uh, all men are given the votes and a certain number of women. It's a large number, um, any women over 30 and that own some property get the vote. And this is in fact probably most of the women in the population. And there is a great newsreel from this time that says, will there be women MPs? So not only have they got the vote, but suddenly there's the idea that they can stand for parliament. And we see uh, Emmeline Pankhurst and Christabel and Flora Drummond and Miss Kenny standing outside where they're going in to, to have a big meeting. And so here is the speculation that they can now stand for Parliament. So the campaign has worked, it's a real advance. <laughs>